see if the oh, hello. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. All right. How's there this? Does this look good? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Good. All right. This good. Looks great. Uh, you sound good. You look good. I'm Thank happy you. to have you good. on my computer here. I'm excited about your podcast. You've been so nice to me, and uh, I don't. I don't. Uh, I can't refuse that. I appreciate that. I just. It's, you just love celebrities, I think, or somebody. It's not just celebrities. It's <laughs> somebody personal. I'm telling you that I don't just want anybody on my show. That's why I asked you to come on it for, for whatever so reason. There's, I see something in somebody and I'm interested in getting to know who they are for real. So that's you know, my approach. I think it's a great approach. And I listened to a few of the podcasts and uh, it's evident that you care about people and uh, humanity and all those great things. And your uh, people like you automatically and uh, you're very sincere and you should listen to uh, Kara and me on uh, the podcast. It's, uh, what's it, super famous? No, mostly famous? No. Uh, very famous? Super famous? Am well, you want to know why it's, why it's really famous? Yeah, I know. There's a reason. It's not, it couldn't be super famous. It has to be okay. really famous because I'm interested in the real person. Oh, I love that. So, you know, obviously you're famous. My other yeah. guests are famous. But to me, I, just like I explained already, I want another real human being. So it's got to be really famous. All right. Let's do it. I love the dress. You know, ever since I played a woman, I look at all women's clothing a lot more like, like, it's that that fits you so well, not just physically, but your mood and who you are and your coloring and all that stuff. Thank you. And don't you kind of think that when you're wearing something, it also affects your mood? Absolutely. That's why I put this jacket on because I really love this jacket and I love the the turtles, the mutant turtles. The oh, ninjas. I didn't even see that. Yeah, it it's a ninja, ninja turtle. turtle. So yeah, now I see. Ninja. And so, you know, I what makes you happy and blue is you know a good good f conduit so is pink blue and pink are uh humanity love colors i call them i agree and look my logo is blue so here are the yeah. blues that i chose yeah. for my logo oh, you know i have a cup collection so you do i do i'd love to put you right up there with uh you know regis and kelly and uh <laughs> kelly and uh, how, uh michael and kelly and um uh, what's the next? Uh, what's, Ryan, is it? Ryan, Kelly yeah. and Ryan. I have all the Kelly. Uh, and I even think I have a Regis and Kathy mug. I've always loved mugs. I drink coffee. I have a Maui Gyms, a Maui Invitational. It's a basketball. I play, spent a lot of time in Maui in my life. Excuse me, I'll take a little sip. Yeah, please do. Um, cheers to that. So cheers, uh, cheers to you and cheers cheer, to well, let me get my get my yeah. mug up here. Cheers. Cheers to really famous. And cheers to Louis Anderson. And cheers and Maui. To, yeah, and Kara Mayer, right? Is it Mayer? It's Mayer, exactly. Yeah. Miss so, always Mayer, right? With people. Always. And when yeah. I, you know, I, not so much anymore, but when I was yeah. growing up, it was always Kara. And I really pronounce it Kara because Kara. You know, Did I say Kara? No. I said but, Kara, right? Yeah, you said Kara. Yeah, um, yeah a lot of times, you know, people are, you know, names. I always tell people when you're going to name your baby, make sure it isn't a burden. Yours is good, but you're right. They, if, if there's any doubt in it, that's why I kind of like the names that are phonetically spelled. So that, right. you know, it's like Lee, Ka, or, you know what I mean? You hear those names and you go, perfect. You, you said what you wanted to say. Exactly. So Louis is very clear. It's very easy to know. Yeah. So your My parents, dad's name, by the way. So I did. I read your book too, but like oh. a year ago, I read it. Oh wow! Wow. Is that when you? Is that when you wrote it? Is that when? It came yeah, out yeah. I book? think it's a. It's been about a year because the paperback, uh, "Hey Mom," just came out with a different cover, which I'm really excited about because it's uh, the front of a refrigerator with magnets and. Uh, pictures and notes to my mom and that and so I really love 
uh, changing it around. Um, I love that book. Um, I just did, I just got a, a bunch of audios. I'd really love you, you to hear it on audio. So you send me a mug. I send you the book. You got it. Deal. How's that sound? That sounds perfect. So as yeah. you know, right, so I was reading the book. You probably didn't know this one because I know that you saw that I tagged you in, a, in an Instagram post like a year ago and then probably again recently. Yes, again recently. Um, but I remember being at Barnes and Noble one day when I was picking up the book mm -hmm. and I was like, I've got, I did a post with me and the cover of your book saying, I just feel like I really want to get to know Louie Anderson. Who can help me? I think I did see that post. Didn't did I you? respond to it? Maybe I, I saw it. So. I don't I, think I saw I think that I one. Did. Oh, okay. Well, repost it now. Well, here's the one. I'll I have will to repost send you it. now the new book cover and you can repost that one. I happily will. So the one that you responded to was last summer, I made a little video clip of my dream guests and I included right. you in it. That you, was so sweet. So I was like, I'm Louis Anderson, you know, baskets. And yeah. you responded to that. And I was like, amazing. So happy. And you and were so it, patient with me to get on your show. I appreciate that. Cause I know, you know, um, I know that people, you know, I'm not an aficionado on, on, um, on, on uh, social media, but I do like, um, I have been better about following up with people who personally uh, direct message me. And so you were very persistent and you're just welcoming. You're a welcoming person. I didn't want to be a stalker though. I was like, it's a fine line between letting you know I really, really do appreciate I don't you. think there's anything stalker about you. So yeah, I think you can relax okay. on that. Okay. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. So, yeah. but I'm thrilled that a year later, here we are. And uh, I think I also heard you on Mark Marin's podcast. You did his oh, show yeah. too, right? I love Mark. That was a good one too. Yeah. And yeah I told him he should be nice to his mother. That's right. Do you remember that? That's right. I mean, it was out of line in one sense. He was complaining about his mom, and I go, Jesus, I, you're, you're, I'd give anything to be having my mom bug me right now. Yeah, you know, you know why? I don't why? think that's out of line. I think that's no, it uh, wasn't. Honestly. I knew Mark. I know Mark forever, and he's a lovely person, and um, I'm so proud of him with Glow and everything he's done, and and he really is responsible for us having this conversation in a lot of ways. How so? I mean, well, he kind of pioneered the podcast. He really did. I mean, people don't maybe give him credit for it, but That's true. He, he pioneered it. I went over to his place. He's, has a, he used to have a place, and I think it was Echo Park or something, and it was really hard for a guy my size to get into it. It was like in the garage. It was downstairs. I don't know where it was. It was in back. And then he, uh, he's got a new setup. It's very nice. And, you know, he is a real person, too. That's why he is. That's yeah. why people love him on the podcast. Yeah. It's my favorite podcast is his. He, oh, his good. is the one that I religiously listen to. That's good. Well, I have so to have you on my podcast. We should just put this recording. If you send me the recording, I'll just release it on my podcast for you if it'll help you. Of course. I would love that. That would be yeah, amazing. Yeah, it'd be fun, right? Yeah, I will send it to you. I, I've Go always ahead. thought that people, that's how these should work. If I'm going to do your podcast, right. you should, I should be able to take what you did, but also maybe what we'll do at some point is before we finish it, not today, but maybe I'll just do a new a, a chunk about you. I'll actually interview you about your podcast and how it started and everything. Let's do that. Love it. Let's do that, that would be a lot of fun. That would be that would of be fun. fun. And I, you know, I don't mind. I'm, I love interviewing and I love listening and I love connecting, but I have no problem talking a lot too. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, where are you those, from? I'm from New Jersey. Oh yeah. I thought so. How do you, what do you mean? You guys always snip off your words. I'm from New Jersey. You snip off in, in a good way. It's not a, it's not a bad, I'm from. Wait, so tell yeah. me more. How? It's just, you know, Italian, maybe it's Italian. You're Italian, right? Are you Italian? No. Not the right. least bit, but I feel oh. 100%. Actually, oh, maybe 1%. Wait a minute. Meyer's my German then, right? 
It's probably I, German, the right? story goes that my great grandmother came from Austria, Hungary. Ah, that okay, that would make sense too. So all the borders were different back then. Yeah, the sure. Names. But yes, but I do feel a hundred percent. Maybe not 100, but I feel at least 50% Italian. So do you think everybody who lives in New Jersey ends up speaking kind of an Italian, an, a part of the Italian language or accent? No, I think there's something no. about, about me that, that it, it, I'm so drawn to it. And it was the no. kind of thing where when I am in Italy, traveling, visiting, whatever, I definitely feel like I'm home. These are my peeps. I, like, I love Italy. I had the yeah. most wonderful time in Italy. It's the, there's just something so, I don't know. I just feel so. People walk there. arm in arm, man and yeah. man or woman and woman. It's a, it's, it's a, it's like family. Yes. It's like if you're a friend to somebody, you, you would walk arm in arm with them out of love. I think just a love. It's the amore. Yeah. It is. But I think that's interesting that you said that too, because right, that's the thing that I, that I love also just in life. Like I love that human, that family, the connection. I love family. I'm close to my own family. So there probably, mm. some of it might have to do with that, I guess. But Maybe it's just the East Coast vibe. You can pick it up, you know? Uh, so tell me, now, what am I cutting off? What are my words? Uh, I can't, I'm no good at this, but I just got it right away when you said I'm from New Jersey, you know? Just um, say, like what? What'd you say to me? No, you cut me off. No, I'm from New Jersey. I think. Oh, so I cut you off. You mean? Yeah, you yes. and you cut. I think you do when you. I don't know. I, yeah. We'll find out. I yeah. I make I'm stuff awesome. up. You know, I was an expert before Google came around. <laughs> I was really smart about a lot of things, but I Google remember came, seeing right. a T-shirt once. There was a T-shirt hanging at one of these souvenir shops. And there was a shirt that said, I don't need Google. I've got a teenage son. Ah, uh, that's like, a great shirt. You could also um, make that same shirt. I don't need Google. I just asked my mom. Exactly. You know, or just ask Christine Vasquez. She knows everything. Okay, so Christine Vasquez. So you brought her up. I've got to go there with you. Yeah, let's do it. When I see and hear Christine Baskets on TV. So I will talk about it in the intro. Everybody's going to know they don't watch Baskets already or they didn't watch it. They can see it on Hulu now, right? I heard you say that. Yeah. Today. Yeah. So they can watch on Hulu and I strongly recommend it. But when I see Christine, I like put my hand to my heart when I'm watching. Like, oh, that's how that's much so it sweet. moves me. You move me oh, as Christine. That's so sweet. That means the world to me. And I can tell you. Chip! Chip! Stop it! Do the podcast. Anyone? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> more of that. More yeah, of that. Okay. Yeah, she's she's from. I do it sometimes. I used to do it in the airport all the time. You know, I'd be walking up the terminal, and go chip, and people would go because they know that was a big signature thing without even meaning for it to be in the show. I'm, you know, I come from a yelling family. So I know my mom would never yell, but I would yell for someone to, you know, come to me rather than me go to them. So, so That's I use that and it was a really good, it's unsettling when your mother calls out like that to you, especially when you're the Zach's character chip, it would be unsettling to you to have that. He was so tiny in so many ways with his, his acting that I was so big in the in that and loud and obnoxious, but you know, but I was his mother, so I could get away with it. But I think it was hard for him as a character, probably. Definitely. Even though we never discussed that, he just was such a great actor. He he taught me so much. So you didn't talk about the relationship between Christine and Chip at all? No. It no, just we happened. just did it. We just did it. Well, you know, I would, uh, I would talk to him as Christine on the set. I didn't talk to him as Louie. I wouldn't, I never asked, I told people, don't call me Louie. You can so call me Mama Baskets or Christine, but, you know, I wanted to leave Louie in the trailer, you know, with the, before I come onto the set. I didn't really want, 
you know, Christine was Christine and I didn't want, you know, people always say to me, you played a woman, like you're a man playing a woman. I go, you know, I just was, I'm a woman playing a woman. I left the man out of my life. Wow. And you that was so really, her. I was so her and still love that character and what she gave me. I think, you know, even though I brought her to life, what she gave me was even more than I could have ever dreamed of. Like how so? What? Well, that is a character that I think people watch and forget it's me. I think they just forget Louis Anderson's in there. And that's the highest compliment, I would say. You, you know, forget it's an actor altogether, you, I think. You, you so think it's a real it. person. Yeah, you think it, it is a real person. And I think, and I know that you, you know, I've heard you before talk about how you've based her on your mom. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's so interesting. You, oh, I think one of the things I heard you say once was that I think a lot of people know a woman some way like Christine. Yeah. And it's, for me, I don't know somebody like Christine, but mm. she rings so true. Well, she must remind you of someone though. And no. not necessarily, but maybe her heartstrings or whatever, her humanity you know what? or whatever, That's it. you know. That's I think it, it has to it has to be something that draws when, you. Yes. When she struggles, like and you're talking about the how she can she I love when she calls Chip, all that is so good. And that's so part of her. But when I see her struggling, like I remember when she was trying to like better herself at a certain point and she was in the oh. she went into the lake. It was a lake, oh. I think, right? No, it was uh it was the ocean. Was it the ocean? It was down in Long Beach in a little bay, but it was really it was such an emotional scene for me. I, I was crying uh before and after that scene because I knew what it meant. It was uh, amazing. The writers wrote an amazing scene and it was night and it was freezing and they made me take my shoes off to walk in that ocean and there were divers there in case anything happened. But still, it was just, it was a complete, it was an emotional scene. It was a very, very, I had it, you know, during several um scenes I, I would break down afterwards. So what would you do? You would break down like where? Would you go off to your trailer? No, I just sat, I would just, no, I, mostly I would just sit uh, after the scene. Like there, if I think there might be a shot of it in the scene. I'm just sitting before I go in or standing. I'm crying in one of them. I'm crying because uh, so we did a few takes, you know. Uh, so it was just, you know, you know, I, I, the character is part of me and part of my mom, part of every person who struggles. So that's it. That it's not that she's a familiar person I've seen, you know, at Walmart or something, which is where she yeah. was Costco, Costco, Costco. Come of on. course, Costco. Why oh, did I, I say Walmart? I can't believe it. I can't oh, believe it. I cannot believe I said that. No, I don't. I'm I'm teasing you. I go to Martha I use Walmart all the time. I like uh I like Martha. For God's sakes. Anyway. You know I'm not really to... famous. It's a podcast. Chip. I'm finally really famous, Chip. You're not. Anyway. Okay, so that is obviously going to go at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah, that's a good thing, yeah. That's good. I love how you start your podcast, by the way. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I love it. So, who did you listen to, by the way? I think I listened to I listened to Todd, which was really good. It was the first one up there. So, but the, what Todd said at the beginning, I go, oh, uh, that was good. And then I go, oh, he didn't even mention that while he was doing that. And then Dennis Quaid, because I've been watching um, Goliath, and Dennis is in Goliath. So you're a collector. Yeah, I've always been a collector. My mom was a pack rat, so she gave, not a hoarder, because we had aisles. So, um, But she was a pack rat, and she collect things. And all that nuance, that whole thing in, with the DeSanti water, that's how Christine, oh. remember it? And my mom would love... That was right out of her, 
her vocabulary. Oh, look so, at I could put this in a window, this color blue. That's right. That's that right. was right out of my mom. That was right. So did that you was, tell them then? Did you give them these lines? I ad libbed that stuff. Oh. I was just sitting there. Ad, we were ad libbing. Jonathan always let us. So I just started ad libbing. Same with the uh, curly fries thing, the all that, all that stuff on the couch. I always, I pretty much, there was a line to say, but I always tried to enhance it. So did you think about it before when you were reading the script? It just came no. out in the moment. When I saw you, the water. You were being in the cursed, blue bottle. I you saw were, like your blue cup, you know? Yeah. Ah, that's so, that makes sense. Cause that's how yeah. it felt. It felt like it was just. Coming it felt out real, of you. right? Yeah. Yeah, like it was just coming out of you naturally. So how? I mean, that Zach... was the gift that was given to me. So that was a gift, and Zach, you know, he just followed right. Sometimes my job, I was just trying to make him laugh, and the director, and Martha. So I was being selfish. I needed to say something that they didn't expect, because that's. That's really good stuff that seems real. And, and he's, he'd go right along with it, you know? He w didn't emote that much, I guess, on screen anyway. Yeah. When he was playing well, Chip. Yeah, so remember, remember with the, was it Fudge? Where there was Fudge or something, I made Fudge. I don't remember the Fudge. And he, I go, why don't you have some Fudge? And he finally screamed at me, I don't want to eat Fudge. You know, because I kept saying, why don't you have a nice piece of fudge? Because my mom would always say something was nice and inanimate. Why don't you have a beautiful, delicious piece of fudge? It's, you know, my fudge is notorious. You know, that kind of stuff. So yeah. it was just fun. So, I mean, it sounds like fun. So Dale it was also. Fun. Like, I Dale. Could never, Dale, I mean, it was all about, all about Chip, you and Chip. But when Dale would come in, like I would definitely think those were two different, like two different actors too. I had people ask me on the road who plays Dale. Really? Mm -hmm. They really didn't know? They didn't know. And I go, no, that's uh, Zach. Oh, yeah, oh, I see that. But not wow. always, they, not everybody knew. He was so good at it. Yeah, I mean, so the way he talked even was so different from the way yeah. Chip talked. Everything about it. He, it took him, you know, he had, we, so we'd shoot the scene where they were both in it, shoot it with Chip first, and then shoot it with Dale. And then you would watch how brilliant Zach was because he had set up something with Chip that he paid off with Dale. Uh, and you would just go, oh my God, this guy is a genius. Wow. That's very brilliant. Cool. Brilliant. So so then how did that work then if he was playing off himself? Was there a stand-in or somebody? Yes. There were two people who looked like one of, there were two different people. One looked like Chip and one looked like Dale. So wild. Um, and, and that's how different they are. The, the stand-in couldn't be the same for both. That is interesting. So that to me was like brilliant. Jonathan, what a great director he is. Portlandia, on and on. I can just go on and on. It's so funny. I saw, I checked out your, your YouTube channel too. I didn't realize until um, this week that you had a YouTube channel and you, I think you yeah, had I just have it. So no, yeah, I have a Brit. It's kind of new. So how do you like it? Uh, you know, like I always say, where does it live? What is it doing? Are people watching these? How do I get something? Do I, do I get more something out of this? Is You're it right. good? All mistakes are forever on here, all flubs. But you know, my interviews with Jonathan uh, and Martha and yeah. uh, Alex Morris, beautiful interviews. With I was so sad when I learned that that was going to be it. It was going to there was going to be no more. You know, like I really, I feel like it needs to come back. Like I, there's so much. You know what? You? you could start that petition. I, I, I will always start say. that petition. Because we always we wanted another season, we pitched it, and uh, I have to thank FX for keeping a show on that didn't probably make any money whatsoever. But it was good for that 
for us you know that to be believed in you know what i mean that and that must attract other people to that brand do you know what i mean the fact that you know they didn't even i don't think they even told fx that i was going to be the mother why really why not they thought it was gonna what well until it was done until it was done i don't think the fx saw it until it was all done so they just greenlighted it and said, go ahead and do it and didn't interfere at all. And then not one bit. And then Jonathan and Zach just went to town or what? Mm-hmm. Jonathan, and so, Zach and Louie, you know, cause Louie was right. the person who called me on it. So, Wait, so Louis, Louis, Louis CK called you. On yeah. It. Yeah. And Jonathan was there and Zach was there when they called me. I think I remember you talking about this. So yeah. what was, I think they were looking for a Louis Anderson type or something. Was there something like that? Zach may, said, the mother sounds like this. And he went, ah. And Louis said, that sounds like Louis Anderson. Should we just have Louis Anderson play the part? And I was thrilled. I, I, I've been waiting for that part my whole life. So, so you didn't feel. I didn't all. even know it. You weren't. No, like Cause I did my mom on stage all the time, you know? Uh-huh. I didn't know I was going to morph into a cross between my mom and all my sisters and my dad and everybody's in there. My whole cacophony of uh, life experiences. So you, obviously, your family was huge in terms of you growing up, your personality, your life everything like yes do you kind of feel like your family's always with you yes because i try to celebrate them in all of my work and i feel like they know that that they are i'm nothing without them i'm i'm you know i was 10th of 11 children so that big boiling pot of stew of you know all those that came before me was just I got to taste the best of all of it and probably the worst of all of it in some ways but still I think that that was you know I always say that I you know they had to go through all their stuff and I think it's like an alchemy you know it 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 it, it's just the right temperature do you ever taste that soup and you can never get it again yeah, you go. Yeah. Oh, I wish you I had that why. soup, that lentil soup you made that one time in the '60s. Is there any way you know where that recipe is? You know, because it, the soup and the stew and all those things—that was sustenance. And so I look at families like that, a stir a big pot, you know, and probably what you think of with your family. You know, you're a part of. When I looked at when I went in to try the clothes on. For Christine, I picked out the stuff myself off the rack. It was all there. I mean, the okay. you know Amanda Needham, which we just did her. Uh, she did Portlandia and she did baskets. And there's a woman who makes uh, Miles Ahead, which is a clothing brand, real clothes for real women, and she made all Christine's clothes. Oh, okay. And. Um, and I just said, well, my mom or sister would wear that, that. Give me that big hat. Remember the hat in Easter in Bakersfield? Of course. I said, give me that hat. That's going to be a big deal. When we, when I, and I put that hat on and I went, oh, my God, this is it. This hat is it. This is it. I remember, I mean, I remember, I'm picturing you sitting at, at like the kitchen table with all the other women, like your friends. Yes. That would get together. Yeah. And I think you must have been wearing something and they were commenting it on or something, or maybe was that when you were going to be on TV, right? When Christine was going to be on TV, maybe because of the rodeo. Well, there's a couple times uh, they always complimented me and then would slash me across the throat. That's right. You know, That's it. so when I was playing cards, but then yes, when I made the, my own outfit for the, the road at the rodeo <laughs> that, I had a wedding dress that I redid and put that big right. buckle on it and the hat. I didn't do it. Somebody else made that. And that was like, so 
you you couldn't uh i mean that's genius that wardrobe genius. stuff and i when i saw it i went oh my god thank you so much thank you right. thank you thank you and those clothes that that Mar that uh christine wore were so christine they were so yes. her well, i wanted to do a line at with uh miles ahead and uh amanda for costco the christine baskets collection but you know it's so hard to get people behind that kind of thing and <sighs> what does it mean is it cross dress what does it mean for people but i think boy i think my mom would love to have outfits like that and stuff like that my mom would have really sure. enjoyed having those beautiful drapey big girl things for a big girl, which now is much more prevalent, thank God, yeah. you know, but. Well, uh, how was your mom, like when you were growing up, like how did you see your mom? Who was she to you? I know it's a big question. Yeah, it is. I just saw her as, uh, actually, I saw her as a, a, you know, she was kind of could have been an actress herself. She was a little dramatic. And she loved everything and loved everyone. And if she disapproved, she would just go, mm. like Christine. Mm. She'd do that thing with her eye. and uh, But she never hardly ever tore anyone down. And I think what she really was, she was like a armor between her, my dad and us. She was in between. She took all the... She took, you know, how they put a, you know, a tank out in front and then they're going to shoot at it. My dad was the shooter and he was an abuser. So he was cruel to her, but she never allowed him, at least in my growing up, get to my, I think my younger, my older brothers took a lot of abuse from my dad, but my mom didn't, uh, didn't allow it. And I think it was really... I just had admired that she could be that strong. So she was like, she was a rock that felt like when you laid on it, it was like a pillow. That's a great description. Yeah, because that's what it was. Yeah, you know? the best of both. Yeah, best. she was that. Uh, yeah. Oh, this isn't hard at all. This is soft. Right. Yeah. So you felt she like was she everything was... she needed to be. That's really too what it was everything she needed to be. And do you think all of your brothers and sisters felt the same way? Yeah, I think so. I mean, as you know, in my book, my mom gave up one of her daughters uh, to her sister who couldn't have children mm -hmm. because she had a baby back to back. My brother and my sister were born one year apart to the day. So, you know, she was trying to do good and then my dad wouldn't let them adopt her. And it was just horrible, horrible stuff long before I, I had any idea of it. And I always feel that my sister really hurt my sister a lot. And um, yeah. but I don't, th I think my mom's intentions were good. I mean, she had 11 children, so. Right, it was a different situation, a different time. She was trying to do something nice for her sister. Yeah. Well, with all of the, you know, the problems or all the struggles, it is interesting to me that your family still kind of stuck together in terms well, of- Well, you know, <clears throat> well, here's the thing. Yeah, we're all very close. Um, here's the thing. Even though my dad was a miserable alcoholic and abusive person, he never left. So in some weird way, it's like you're, con what would have happened if my mom would have left? Was there a person that would be just as bad or not? You know, like, you know, families are such a strong system that if you try to disrupt it, they will not allow it. They do not like that idea that you're going to disrupt it. Yeah. under any circumstances and you know I think it was a lot of pain and a lot of hardship and hard on my sisters and you know my mom was more stick with it maybe he'll turn into a nicer person and mm -hmm. you know 
you know, it's a different time back then. It was a different time. Yeah. And I do think that it has happened in many families where maybe I'm not saying like, she, you know, she sh you know, should have stayed or not. I'm not saying either way. You're feeding back, by the way, on, uh, or I am. Oh, really? A little bit. I, you come in closer, I think. Then you're getting feedback? I don't know. Maybe it's me that's getting Am it. I, I still? I'm, you, I'm am not I sure. still? I just hear an echo in there. Uh, you hear it? How am I now? I'm right well, at my it's microphone. something like maybe it's, let me see if it's me. Hold on. I hear mm -hmm. it. You don't hear that? Is it, what does it sound like? Does it sound like feedback or does it sound Re like something going on? It like reverb. It. it sounds like okay. reverb or maybe is something I, going on. You got something there's a going on? There's a landscaper outside of my. Oh, that's what it is probably. Do you, is that what, it's, what it sounds like though? Because it's not at it my house. Like, it sounds like wah, 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 wah. Is that it? Let me do something. I'm going to Hold close. on. Let me. Uh, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Curtain. Do your thing. It's across the street. And I'm going to close my curtain. So is he like digging? Is he like, is it digging? Is he grading I stuff? Like, I hear. It's better. That, it's better. That's it. Because it, it just got better outside. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Well, we'll that just, was it. I just wanted you to know what it was. So how's my, how's, since I closed the curtains, how is my lighting? Does it look different? It looks just as beautiful. Actually, okay. it's better lighting now. Is it? Yeah. Cause you know, you're vibrant against the brown. Is it brown? They're brown, right? Yes. The curtains, they're pretty. Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh, okay. Good to know. Cause I'm seeing yeah. all of you. I don't want to, I'm up in the corner, but I see all of you on my screen and I much prefer it that way. So well, whatever you want. Yeah, You're so as boss. long as you let me ask you a question. Help me test something, will you? We're right yeah. in the middle. This, this yeah, is, let's do it. I feel like leave this friends. in too. Leave okay. this in because it's interesting. Okay. And, uh, yeah, you let's know, you do are it. so right. These yeah. are the things that people that, will mention to you forever. You're absolutely right. So let me test this. I'm going into this different view. Did anything change on your end? Did you just do it? I just did it. Oh, I didn't do it Nothing. again. Now do it back. Okay, because I'm doing the I went what from speaker view to the gallery view. And sometimes the tape, like what it records for me, yeah. it goes to whoever's speaking and that's who I see. And then other times it has both of us. And, and I did- I'm gonna pitch you somebody. Cause I just, uh, I've been working out with a trainer in the pool. And he told me about this person he heard on Joe Rogan's podcast. Um, who has a book called Breathe. Do you know about it? Breathe? What Breathe. Is who, who is and it? the name is, let me just be a good person, James Nestor. This book, I listened to three hours of it last night on Audible. It changed my life already. I just want you to get, in, get that book if you can. I will get the book for sure. I mean, breathing, he changed the way I breathe. I have been breathing different since I listened to the three hours last night. For me to sit and listen to a podcast, I mean, a book, yeah. an audio book. Good stuff. That's Takes good stuff. It changed okay. my life. I've already told uh, 10 people about it. <laughs> everybody I talk to, I go, you got to get this book. You have anybody with asthma? You have anybody with breathing problems? You have anybody with a weight problem? You have anybody with any problems? Okay. It probably has to do with the breathing and their breath and how they're so breathing. you already told 10 people since yes. last night. How many yes. people do you talk to on a daily basis? Well, not a, you know, I text with somebody or, well, I have a friend who has asthma. So I reached out to him because mm -hmm. I said, listen, you're going to drive to California from here, get that book and listen to it. It'll, it could change. It could cure your asthma. Wait, it's somebody with asthma of, is driving to California from far away right now. Uh, they're going to this week. Yeah. Cause the numbers are a little high in California. I know, but they're, they, they're going to a remote place. And, okay. Yeah. No, I would have said the same thing, but you know what I stopped doing? Trying to control stuff. Mm. Like what people are doing. They've already made up their mind. Why do I need to throw a, a wrench in it? There are people who are in their 60s. If they don't know what's scary, I'm, they're, they're not stupid. So I can't, 
if they are still alive, they're still doing okay then. They must be being careful. So what did you, you used know? to tell people what to do a lot? Well, I would just, you know, I'd have to get involved because that's my mom, you know. Well, you know what I heard? You should be careful because what is, you know, that's Christine. Mm -hmm. Well, I heard that it was a mess over there and I just don't want anyone. I don't want you over there. And that's all I'm going to say about it. But that's not all she's going to say about it. She's going to, right. did you go over there? Did I tell you it was a mess? See, no one listens to me. But that's how you are too, your work. Not, no, I, I, I try not to be that way. Okay. Because you know what? I don't have any control over what people are going to do. Right. You, know, you grow up in a family like mine, you think you have some control, but you really have none. I would think you would feel like you had no control growing up in a family like yours, so big. Well, I have big ego, and I thought I had some sort of control. I'm a comedian. We think we're in charge of the world. Don't you think comedians, uh, I think they're know-it-alls. Do you think? Well, You know them better I mean, than I do. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, uh, you know, like I think that doing a podcast, you're a know-it-all. Because you think you can sit and talk to people and make it interesting. That's a high, high and mighty thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. It's just who I am. I'm a, my mother, my father was an entertainer and my mother should have been. And so what, am, what was my, you know, I, 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 when I say things, people would laugh and I go, oh, I should probably try this comedy. I mean, you seem so like relaxed about the whole thing. I am. That you are. But is that because you've been- I get anxious and have a lot of fear and anxiety because I grew up in that abusive household. So I have all that at all times, but I've worked really hard and through a lot of therapy, you know, I, you know what I always say is all the worry in the whole world cannot prolong your life one second. So why give it any gravitas? Every prayer I've ever read says, let go. Every book, every yogi, every person says, let go. Let go, let God, let go of things. Let, you know, don't worry about tomorrow. Just stick with today, you know? And so yeah. I think that stuff rubs off on you. I'm not saying you can always do it. Right. But you just said that you have, that you feel like anxious all the time. It's with you all the time. But well, I mean, don't... yeah, I'm so sensitive. Like when I watch the news and I see the tragedies and the stuff like that, I go, I somehow, I think when you grow up in an alcoholic family, you feel responsible for the alcoholic somewhere as a yeah. kid. Yeah. You just Which do. Of it's course, it's faulty thinking, but it's very normal. It's, well, it's just it's that, typical. well, I wonder if it's me. One day you just said, I wonder if it's me. I wish I was, maybe I should be a better child. Anyway, so I think, I think I do that, but I think I dismiss it almost immediately now. I think I go, you're crazy, Louie. That's very good to get yeah. to that point and to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, only 67 years. <laughs> Did therapy do it a lot? Is that a lot of Yeah, it? and life. Because, you know, if you have life and you're always worried and nothing manifest of that worry then you yeah. realize what are you worried about right but not everybody does that naturally like it's i don't think i do it naturally i think i just am that kind of person who's more internal and on my external i look really calm you do look so, very calm externally yeah, because i think calming is what's good for people and so i'm a caretaker so i oh. want people to feel comfortable and that is really powerful because, right, you definitely give that vibe off. Like even the second I saw you on the screen and we started talking, totally relaxed and natural. Right. You, I would have been works. a good therapist. I would have been a really good therapist because I'm not out to, I'm, I'm not out to hurt anyone. You I'm know, I to, was a therapist. I'm, oh, I don't, I didn't know that. I was. But, you know, um, Dennis Quaid said you, your thing was like therapy for him. That's, I, I was a therapist. Yeah. And so I think that, that uh, I see th things a little bit through that filter, not really even through a filter, but I'm just always so interested in the actual experience and like 
what you real what you're really feeling and thinking and going through. And I always like you, I want everybody on the other end of me to feel at ease. Yeah. And well, safe. that's why you're you're really good at what you do because this is a conversation we're having. You don't have a overwhelming agenda. Mm -hmm. And I am completely relaxed and comfortable. And I love, you know, I felt it right, right away. Like we, you and I would know each other in life if we were, you know, yes. well, we do now. We're friends yes. for life now. How about this though? Isn't this a good setup? I always wanted to be Madonna. So <laughs> I no, have to say um, your sound is very good. It are, they are good. Yeah. 39 so bucks, 39 I'm bucks. Not. So, you know, $39. $39 Amazon. Bucks for the headset? I'll send you the link. I'm my mother. 39 Why should I pay $89? Right. The 39 I got them. I even bought a person that worked with me. I got them a pair. After I got them and I tried them, I go, I'm sending you a pair. Because that's who my mom was too. A very giving person. And it's amazing how surprised people are that you might send them a gift. That's interesting. Yes. It's always amazing to me. We should be sending each other gifts at all times. Right. Right. You know, I also like the gift that's for no reason except that the person was like, like you're doing. But to yeah. me, the gift giving at a certain occasion actually stresses me out a little because I always oh. feel like I don't know what the other person's really going to like. And it could be somebody super close to me. But yeah. I was like, I don't really know. I don't well, you're really not know. looking at that person then. That, but look I, at I all the things the that, but look at the things that they like. Like if my friend is, is doing lots of work on podcasts and radio and stuff. So he's going to like these. Yes. But right? I think you have to think about it. It's more natural when you're thinking about it during the year, let's say, you know, instead of at Christmas or birthday or something like that, right? Because then you have to suddenly be like, well, what? Yeah, but I know what you're saying. Like, well, then how you am I just, even tuned in? That's yeah, you, what but it sounds like. You of all people right. should know Talking what they want. In. Yeah. Like, I think I'm also not a stuff person. I'm not a stuff. A, you know what I mean? Like, I'm And you not should a, give them something you would like that it made you happy and you should give it to them. I really enjoyed this. I thought you might like it too. So they know what your intentions were of giving mm -hmm. them the mud pack treatment that, or whatever it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, something Italian. I remember going to Italy and going to the place where they make the tiles, all the beautiful tiles and oh, buying, do that. buying like a few boxes of beautiful Italian tiles I still have that I never In the box. Have put up. I probably still have them in the box. So you're outside of Vegas now, right? Is that where you live outside yeah. of Vegas? Mm -hmm. So how did you land there and what do you, how does it feel? Well, uh, 12 years ago, they called uh, my friend Adam Stack, who has Spy Entertainment, who did um, uh, lots of different shows here. He's involved in all, you know, like lots, tons of shows. Um, and he said, do you want to do a show in Vegas? And I said, oh, yeah. I think my manager at the time also was instrumental in that, but he wanted me to do a show. So I moved here 12 years ago and did a show at the Excalibur for six years and then one at the Palace Station for three years. And then the Plaza Hotel I did for one year. And that's when I got the Christine job. And so I stopped and just did that. I'm probably wrong on about the years, but it doesn't matter. But um, so, and then in 1984, you know, I've been working in Vegas. You know, actors go to New York, movie stars go to LA, and comedians, Vegas is their true home. Because the headline in Vegas, with your name and headlining, that's the ultimate thing for a comedian. That's Lenny Bruce. Right. You know, that's Buddy Hackett. That's uh -huh. Don Rickles. That's Johnny Carson who worked down the street at the Sahara. Bob, you know, all those comedians. And so when you're a comedian, Rodney and all those people. I was just going to say, what about Rodney? Yeah, Jackson? Rodney. Yeah, we were good friends always. Yeah. You were? In, in the, when I lived in Minnesota, we had a little club. 
called Mickey Fins. And so Rodney was coming and Jeff Gerbino, who's a comedian, who kind of started that club or was one of their founding members, said, we should go see Rodney. And I go, yeah. I said, we should get some balloons which they thought was silly, but very Minnesotan. And then I heard that Rodney liked scotch. So I went to the liquor store and got a bottle of Glenn Levitt scotch. And I brought it. And he was so touched by the fact that I brought him that scotch. He brought it up till the day he died to people. I remember when Louis, hey, kid, how are you? you know? um, and he and I stayed friends. And I'm still friends with his widow. And... Uh, you know, he was a uh, beautiful, I always hugged him. He was not really thrilled about my big hugs all the time, but he you know, Rodney like probably was, a, no, he, you know, he just like, you know, he comes from a different era where men probably don't hug people uh, as much, uh -huh. you know, but I always gave him a big hug and told him I loved him. And uh, yeah, don't you though? But um, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. He was just a lovely, I, I saw through, you know, I grew up with an alcoholic father. So yeah, I so saw a person. It. I could see the difficulty he had with it. And so, right, so he was very it. depressed, right? Depressed. Uh, I mean, that was part of his character in a lot of oh, ways. Oh, really? I yeah, I mean, like younger, but I think he was in a, maybe, I mean, comedians are at any moment could go there because that's the stew we sit in. Uh huh. But, you know, the stew's only this deep, so you could, choose to get out of it if you want by standing up okay. so i always i heard that from a therapist once well you know you're laying in about a foot of water if that so you could just get up that and get out is of that water brilliant. That's and i brilliant. said and that always resonated with me that i was choosing to be in that self-pity uh depressed state i mean mostly i just want you know i i have so much joy I couldn't be any happier and more grateful. I'm humbled by everything that's going on for me and still is after 42 years. Who am I to complain about anything? Uh huh. Yeah, you're I living mean, a good life. You've had it, you've gotten have. everywhere and more than you ever would have dreamed about, right? And like, my what, best stuff is yet to come. Do you believe that? I believe it. I believe it too. Yeah, I it like about you, I believe it yes. about me. I believe it should be about everybody. It, listen, this hour has blown by. Am I right? Right? I'm just saying this has been like we just started talking. Yes. Yes. Because we are riding the joy of life. Right. Yes. And we are surfing above, dipping in below, but we are going somewhere we're zooming literally that's right and we we're having a ball you know um i just i just can't i i I've, i'd be ashamed of myself during this especially during this pandemic to be complaining about one thing there's so many people in need out there yeah um you know we could do you and i could do another podcast just about what we could do to help people during this time, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, one of the best gifts you could give somebody is, especially nowadays, um, a food bank thing in their name. You know, there's people that have never gone to a food bank before in their entire life. You know, we used to go to food banks all the time growing up and churches and different organizations would bring us food, especially at holidays. And I always thought, what a nice thing that these people who don't know us brought us to make sure that we had a nice Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And right? it makes such a difference. It's not like me. Are you kidding it's me? Totally meaningful. Yes. It was yeah. very meaningful to have an extra turkey for 11 yeah. kids and to have you know, just. But see, isn't it know. interesting though? Because you didn't grow up feeling sorry for yourself. Well, you know a know little bit, probably, with an alcoholic father, a little bit. But you're right. But we didn't. We didn't dwell on the fact we were poor. Right. We we right. said, how can we get a few bucks to, you know, get some uh, French vanilla ice cream and some root beer. Right. 
<laughs> but feeling sorry for yourself, maybe you said maybe a little bit, but is it feeling sorry for yourself when you're really just struggling with the conditions that you're in? I don't know that you really would define it as feeling sorry for yourself even. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I think yes, yes and no. But we did. I think I did. I think I did feel okay. sorry for myself. And because, then you, you know, it. well, because at, I had this mother who had a merry-go-round going around her. Yeah. You know what I mean? She was j pure joy, pure hope. You know, my dad quit drinking when he was 69. She turned to me and said, I told you he'd quit. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hopeful person. <laughs> yes, That's a yes. hopeful person. You know, if you witness joy in a person for 77 years, you are going to, you're going to take a pocket full of that joy, aren't you? Totally. So he, and, and this is why and you, I can scoop into that pocket at any time I want. Right. I can find the good in the worst situations. What I a guarantee gift. you. Well, I'm hopeful. Do you think we have she, to be hopeful right now, especially. Definitely. Do you think and she people have was to vote? Able, people do have to vote. Let's you know? interrupt this program yeah. for this very important message. Well, just because th this is important on so many levels. I don't care who you vote for either. You just have to vote. That's the everybody. most important thing, everybody. So anyways, but you were saying, I'm sorry I, I interrupted saying, that because that was oh, a beautiful please. thing you had going. Um, here's what I wanted to know is, do you think your mom knew that she gave you those things? Like, do you think she saw in you and reflected it all and said, reflected on it and said to herself, this is good. I, whatever I want, I, I passed it on to Louie. She must have, huh? I think so. Cause I, you know, she must have, she must have. I think she was a bright, sparkling light. And I don't, I don't know that she had any control of that. I wish I knew the answers, but I don't need to know them to live that life. Definitely. You don't have to have the answer no. to live no. a great life. Am mm -hmm. I right? Totally. Yeah. To so, yes. It took me an hour and 10 minutes to get you to say totally. No, I'm sad of no, I'm I know, I know. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. I would say it you more know, I have often. Five than... sis I have five sisters, so I tease. I'm a good teaser. I like being teased. That's, <clears throat> I have a yeah. much smaller family than you, but that's yeah. what we do too. And uh, it's part of it. It's the fun of life. So I yeah. like to be teased too. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. What is your goal in every podcast? To get to know the person I'm talking to. That's really, that's, the, get to know the person. That's, that's it. So you we're know, like halfway there, right? <laughs> we're going to have to, we're going to have to work a little harder. I think we could do another podcast though, quite honestly. Think, I think this I'm is sure. part one. Let's do a part two. We can. And we then can, I could just, yeah, I can tell you how I moved to California and all that kind of stuff that I think will be helpful to people with their careers. Because I do that, think that people need help with their careers, especially now. Don't, I'll say one thing to people. Yeah. Don't give up. Stay in the line or the queue or whatever you want to call it to get on the ride of show business or music or whatever you're doing. Stay in the queue. Mm -hmm. Don't get out of the queue because in the queue you might meet somebody or you might see somebody or you might see something or you might experience yourself or your legs and your stamina and your heart and your soul get stronger. That is beautiful <laughs> advice. And t from you, then they need to know, whoever's listening, you know this is advice from Louis Anderson, so he knows what's what, right? So I mean, at, si at 61, I got my dream part of a lifetime. Yes. So, yes. and I and always was, knew um, I would. Staying in line. Well, you, were, you weren't in line. You're not in line I anymore. was in line because I was in line because I hadn't got the acting part I wanted. But so I wanted wasn't taken seriously. I wasn't, I always talked to my agents about getting me a great acting part. And they never did. They never did it. 
Did they try, do you think? I think I was part of the problem. How? I wasn't doing work enough. I wasn't being, you know, I, I'm the kind of guy who might wait around for, for the people who work for me instead of being more bombastic. You know, people who are more bombastic. Joan Rivers told me once, get rid of your management and agents every four years because they start taking you for granted. You know, I thought, wow, that's a really fascinating line. I read one of her books like a couple of months ago, randomly. I don't know why. You were good I, friends too. You were. She was, yeah. I, I have to tell you, I didn't, you know, like I didn't follow <clears> her that closely when, when she was alive, but um, I went back to her book and I was like, hey, she's, she's like a, she's a kick-ass woman right here. She is a pioneer. Yeah. And uh, she just didn't, people it. didn't like what she had to say. Joan Rivers was way ahead of her time because right now she'd be right on point. Truth. Maybe not with all the, you know, taking shots at people, but it was always truth in the taking shots. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, but she said, Melissa, her daughter's you. a lovely person too, but okay. she said that to me, get rid of your agents every four years or two years or something because they start taking you for granted. And, but you didn't do that or did you? I didn't usually. You didn't. Until no, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. So are they still the same guys or women? No. no. So at some point you stop. You yeah, stop. yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I, you're a, you have to, you can't expect um, people to work for you if you don't give them something to sell. If their job is to sell stuff and to get you jobs, you better provide them with exactly what you want and how you want it and when you want it. But interestingly, your best role did not come from an agent. It came from somebody who knew you personally. Almost all my work came from that. We could go over that the next time. All right, let's do it. I'm going to I just have a 2.30. I have a 2.30 yeah. phone call, but so uh, we could have talked for up. two more hours. Let's do part two. We'll plan part two. And I'll yeah. have something to look forward to. And Part two uh, with Lou. We'll talk part two with Lou. We'll talk about your move to California, all the other comedians. What did we just say? All, all your jobs that came from friends. Yeah. We'll touch on all that next and, time. Yeah. And e even if we don't do it. No, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's a, <laughs> there it is. No, 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 no. Who's that? <laughs> Who says that? Your mom? No, 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 no. Is that your own mom. thing? Is that your own thing? No, no, no. Did some teacher, did some coach, did... You know what? No, it's no, my no. dad. It's my it's dad. dad. No, no, no. We're going to do that right now, huh? Props to your dad. I think what, he wouldn't say we're going to do that right now. He'd say, no, no, no. That's not the right thing to do. That's, that's not good. right. Yeah. That's, I think that's who it's from. And we could do mom and dadisms next time too. Then. Well, let's do that too. I'll write it down. Let's do all that. And I want to get you off in time for your, for your 2.30. Uh, yeah, I mean, I gotta, I'm going to be okay. But um, do I have to wait my whole year? time, the whole time, I don't, I was saying, is it Kara or Kara? Kara. It's Kara. And I'll and, tell, yeah. And it, but I think it's people's biggest fear when they're talking to you. Is it Kara really? or Kara? Oh. So you should do in the first person. Uh, me being Kara or whatever it is that you need to do at the beginning okay. of that podcast. I'll do that. You know, it's funny because at the end I do it. Here's what I tell everybody at the end or I ask everybody. I say, will you do me this one favor before we end just to do a little testimonial that I can put on social media? So I say, oh, yeah. Okay. So, so I say, so you're going to say this. I'm just going to do it like I would normally. Yeah, yeah, so you're yeah. going to say, hi, this is Louie Anderson. I just talked to Kara. And then you say anything you want. That's okay. what I, so All I right. say it at the end, but I hear what you're saying. I'm going to take yeah. your advice. Yeah. Why not? The beginning. Yeah. So that everybody knows. Always. Yes. I don't. And it's funny because you say this, because I'm always curious about what it's like for you on the other end. And I always, since I want you to be comfortable and whatever, mm -hmm. I want to remove anything that would make you uncomfortable. So you just gave me a big helpful tip that I will use. Oh, good. I need to tell everybody how to pronounce my name from the beginning. So I just got done talking to Kara. Yes. I just right? finished talking to Kara. Want? I just talked okay. to Kara, whatever, anything I got like you. That. I got it. I got it. Ready? You going to do it? Yeah. All right. Look at the camera.
Duh. How about if I just look right here? Wouldn't that be better? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Hi, Louis Anderson here. I just got done talking to Kara. Kara? Kara is a Kara? No. It's Kara, right? Think of it this way. It's you care about me. Okay, care. got it. I got it. But that will be funny if you put that on, you know. Of course that will be funny. Yeah. Um, hi, I just got done talking to Kara. I'm really famous. Kindly. Please listen to our podcast. We did an hour and plus, and we're going to do part two. You got to hear it. It's so much fun. It was so real. It was so genuine. And uh, it was so lovely, like her. Okay, so that was my talk with Louis Anderson, and there will be a part two. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll get it as soon as I record it, or at least as soon as I edit it and upload it to YouTube. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please make sure you smash that like button and tap on subscribe for more Real Talks with your favorite celebrities. If you didn't like it, that's okay. Make sure you tell all your friends to check out Really Famous with Tara Mayer Robinson. They're the worst videos ever. You've got to check them out.